Pope Francis got key, um, where the PAX is. And also, I just want to take this opportunity to have everyone introduce themselves. I'm Amy Wong. I'm the Computer Technology Integrated Specialist. Bonnie Quinn, third grade teacher. Geraldine Delaney, second grade teacher. I'm Carrie Sanderson, third grade teacher. I'm Rosalind Ng. I'm the parent community liaison that does their Mini Maker Fair. I'm Gary Chin, fourth grade teacher. Sunny Wong, assistant principal. I'm Jason Dare, FSK parent. And my name is Mimi Kastner. I'm the school principal. <laughs> All right, our presentation is about full steam ahead into the 21st century, but first stop, the classroom redesign. So what I'd like to share with you is uh, you have seen our team. What our Francis Scott Key vision is provide student learning experience that is nurturing, compassionate, supportive, and challenging. Equip students with appropriate 21st century skills, growth mindset, and confidence by embracing creativity, communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. To make our vision a reality for our students, the last year has been devoted to making major instructional shifts around better supporting our students to develop as mathematicians, scientists, readers, writers, critical thinkers, and learners of the English language. We worked with our entire school community in understanding the need for a growth mindset. Our school has adopted STEAM as a framework to support us in developing hands-on learning opportunities that help students make connections between what they learn in the classroom and to the real world. As part of our STEAM effort, we have our annual Maker Fair, we also have our school-wide design challenge days, and we're teaching computer and engineering science courses. And as we move forward with our instructional shifts and further development of STEAM opportunities for our students, it has become apparent that our physical environment does not match the shifts that we've made in teaching and learning. So it is often challenging implementing 21st century ideas in a 20th century environment. And at Francis Scott Key, we pride ourselves on being an inclusive community that provides access for all of our students, including um, 62 uh, students receiving special education services, so however, our students who use wheelchairs or who have bulky communication devices cannot always be fully integrated into all aspects of our lessons because of the physical limitations of the classroom. So with our current classroom configuration, there are times um, when the furniture creates a physical um, distance between students that makes it more difficult for them to collaborate and communicate, um, like Ms. Quinn said. Um, for our EL students, who are reluctant to speak, that distance makes it easier for them to disengage. And at FSK, we have 177 um, English language learner students. Um, this picture, oh, sorry, can you go back one? Sorry, this picture is from my classroom, and these are two students who, in the beginning of the year, were very reluctant to even speak. But with a STEAM, I just reconfigured really quickly, got them closer together, and with a STEAM activity, got them talking without any prompting with each other. So, um, our data shows that our school is doing relatively well under reading inventory, SBAC, um, and ELA and math. However, you can see a clear gap between our SPED and ELL students with the rest of our population. So research shows that women make up half of the U.S. college educated workforce, but only 20% of women choose to be in science and engineering. From my personal experience through implementing FSK's Mini Maker Fairs the last two years and design challenges, I've seen girls, English language learners, and students with disabilities excited, collaborating in many of the STEAM activities on site on a weekend day because they want to be there. Currently, due to lack of space in the classrooms, movement is incredibly limited. Our teachers have been using creative ways to address the lack of mobility in hallways and other shared spaces 
are often utilized as an extension of the classroom. Um, as you can see here, this is one of our fourth grade classes that often reconfigures their room for special presentations and events. And uh, as you can see, it is a time-consuming process that requires a lot of coordination and cooperation between the students and the staff. And so this brings us to our design challenge. How might we enable teachers to develop and implement authentic inquiry-based learning by optimizing existing classroom space and ensuring access for all students, specifically ELL, SPED and girls. And our first design feature is inclusivity and efficiency. And through the design process, we discovered the need for reconfigurable classrooms so that flexible grouping can be created with ease for different activities, which can increase access and meet the various learning needs of the class. It also allows for quick and safe movement, minimizing instructional interruption. We also saw the need to to meet the needs of our different learners through the use of a variety of different tables and chairs within the same classroom. We're considering different heights, styles, and materials. In addition, we also considered the need for different configurations based on grade level needs, as the classroom needs for kinder would not be the same for those of fifth grade. In our second design feature, accessibility and smart design, we saw the need to provide ample storage for students' personal items and classroom materials, which will provide more open space, allowing students to access materials independently based on their learning needs. And our third design feature is around um, equity and social justice. We know that furniture and redesigning the classroom environment is not enough that there is going to have to be a lot of professional learning that also comes with this. And so we are wanting to use um, the designing group work um, strategies for heterogeneous um, classrooms um, so that we can have shared learning around this. And we chose this particular book because it addresses um, status. We know that when kids walk into the classroom, they already have an idea who they consider smart and who's not. And so it gives very specific strategies around that. It also provides a lot of um, learning about re um, designing collaborative work so that students really feel like they have to rely on each other, that they really are smarter together. And so, um, as you can see from this slide, re redesigning a classroom is very, ex uh, very expensive. And we know that we are not um, able to re redesign 26 classrooms at once. And so we are hoping to have two prototype classrooms. And the reason we chose third grade and fourth grade is because they are on the same grade level band, but they also have very significant um, differences in class um, sizes. You'll notice that the class sizes um, also reflect um, the students that would be in the room for our, uh, that would be there for a uh, mainstreaming for our four special day classes. So if you look on the right, that is what we are going to need help with. Um, the classroom on the left is what we have um, we are going to utilize funds that we've received from grants and um, donations. Um, and, but in the light of what Dr. Matthew said um, earlier, we'd be more than happy with um, help for more of our classrooms. <laughs> so around professional uh, um, development, where we need help is we need um, books for um, all 30 of our classroom teachers. And we are hoping to um, also receive funds so that the third and fourth grade team that is going to have those prototype classroom um, will actually have time to plan as a team 
to really think about how teaching and learning and the um, environment um, interacts. If you look on the right, um, that is um, where we are going to be utilizing our professional uh, development plan and um, also our school funds to really, uh, to really, to really work on whole school learning. So from this slide, you can see um, this is not just isolated one little plan. It is a big plan, and uh, we have been putting a lot of stuff in work. And for the spring 2018, we're hoping once we receive funding, we can set up our uh, prototype, the lab class. And uh, we're also going to try to fundraise to come up money to for the second classroom. So for fall 2018 and spring 2019, we're going to work on how to really uh, re-look at the redesign model and how to really understand how the impact it is with the classroom environment change, which can help us to move on to the next step. Meanwhile, a lot of professional development has happened. We're talking about really bringing the staff skills up to speed. So that's what we're asking. And like Sunny said, we're asking for support, at least give us enough seat money to start one classroom to prototype that, and we're gonna try to fundraise for the second one but we we'll take any offers, all right? All right, so we want to thank everyone and come on board to join us. We are in 21st century. One last word I wanna say is Vision 2025. It's really seven years away. So we wanna be there. <laughs>